to live up to those ideals, I think at this moment in time, requires moral clarity on behalf of every American about what is at stake right now. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. Yet there are those who are intentionally trying to divide us <coughs> as a nation. And I believe each of us has a duty, a duty to not allow factions to sever our unity. Our diversity is our strength and our unity is our power as a nation. And I do believe that we must be guided by knowing that we have so much more in common than what separates us. We must be committed to building communities, building coalitions, understanding that is how we strengthen ourselves as a nation. And the members of the King family are here. Ambassador Andy Young is here. I'm gonna, if I may, for the children of Coretta Scott King, paraphrase something she said, which is that the fight for civil rights, for justice, for equality, must be fought in one with each generation. We have Yolanda King here who epitomizes that understanding, that it is incumbent on each of us at this moment in time in our country to stand for the sake of unity and foundational principles that out of many, we are one. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, as we are in this moment of hate, you have laws, you have policies, you have executive orders. Mr. President, how do you prevent this hate? Is it a hard issue? And how do you intend to stop this hate that you just said by stop? Sir. Talking directly to the American, I'm talking directly to the American people because I think the vast majority of the American people agree with this table. But we, got, we have to understand, this is serious. I said a little earlier when I came in and sat down, I think this is a, as serious a potential turning point for the negative as it was when the turning point for the positive when your dad organized that march. I really think this is a, this is a critical time. We have groups, a significant minority, that, but I think they want to change the direction that we've been working on so on so hard and making such significant progress on it for so long. We can't let it happen. So we just have to speak to it. Just, sir, do you plan to travel back to the Have you spoken with any of the families of the, of the victims? Thanks, everyone. This is the last thing I'll speak to and get this moving. I've spoken to the, uh, the authorities in Jacksonville, and the, I've even spoke to the governor as well last night for some time, all of all, them. And right now, I was at, I asked for the whether or not it was appropriate for the local the local people to contact the families. Two of them are prepared to be contacted. One does not want to be contacted. I'm letting this just let things settle because you know everybody deals with profound loss in a different way, and it's important that. Uh, I know from experience it's important to try to do it in a way that is most helpful and eases the anxiety the most. So I haven't spoken to them yet. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. All right. Okay. <laughs>